<laughs> I only have some, some bills. Hey, the beat bot. You want to hear? Oh, yeah, let's check it out. Oh, can I unplug this? Can I unplug it? Okay, so um, I do this thing in uh, Women We Do Whole Lot of Love. I should just fucking do Whole Lot of Love for a minute. Should I just yeah, do Whole Lot of Love? Yeah. Okay, let's do a lot of love for me. And make sure this works. <laughs> wow, that's a lot of fucking delay this time. Wait, I gotta turn on the delay. <laughs> turn down the delay. <laughs> okay, oh, it's too many repeats, that's the problem. Okay. We're good. Close. Guitarrista ótimo aí, melhor do, do, melhor do mundo, pra não falar um palavrão aqui, sabe? E eu queria saber. Are you getting all that? Como, okay. é, eu queria saber como é que foi pra você estar tá entrando na banda Bon Jovi, assim, de última hora, e tá fazendo os shows e assim já explorando. É que eu não. É que eu não. Eu compreendo o inglês, né? Então. E eu queria saber se você, depois, depois do show, se você poderia me dar de presente uma lembrança sua, um, uma palheta, uma palheta. Depois, depois, depois. Ok, wait, wait, let me guess, let me guess. Come on, let me guess. I want a quarter pounder with cheese, french fries, and a chocolate shake. You guessed it wrong, Meg. <laughs> Um, he is asking basically um, how it was for you to jump on Bon Jovi so last minute and kind of like go on the road and basically play in huge crowds all over the world and he wants a gift in the end which is just a pick basically so oh, okay um, yeah that was uh, it's, it's kind of funny because uh, people were like are you nervous and I was so I mean when you do something like that you have to be prepared and you have to walk on stage and you can't crumble under the pressure of filling in for the Richie Sambora, right? So, it's kind of like, it's one of those things where just when I got comfortable, which is maybe gig two, John would be like, hey, I need you to learn these two songs. And you're like, oh fuck, okay, another two songs, okay. <laughs> and then you get, that, you get comfortable again and hey man, can you learn these three songs for the next show? <laughs> so, it's, it, I didn't quite get to the point where... <sighs> because I was always doing homework, and if we had a day off, I was working, so it wasn't a day off. So, but at the end of the day, um, it got to a point now where, like, you know, hey man, we haven't played in six weeks and we're rehearsing on Wednesday. Listen to the stuff. I'm like, fuck, dude, I got this. 
don't show up and then, you know you make a mistake or two because if it it uh, it stays in here for me because I learned everything by ear again and it just stays in here and then once in a while you're like you know you're distracted even on stage you know you're you're on stage and you're playing with Bon Jovi and there's sixty thousand people and then there's a light in your eye <laughs> or it rains or someone in the front row is going like this <laughs> and you're like fuck man. I just hit an A instead of a G because of you. I hope you're happy. But it's, 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 it's one of those things where um, you just have to be prepared. And that's like, I think, any career, right? If you go do a job interview or you go try out at your first day at a new job at a firm or at anywhere, you know, driving a crane, you just, you need to deliver the first day so that's for me, that's what was in my head. It's like, you know what? No matter what happens, just go out there and do your best and fucking deliver. And then, and then all was good. All was good. Thanks, man. What was that, sorry? John. 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 On the runaway tour? Yeah. Yeah. You, you got it on video? Yeah. I'll have to thank him later. Yeah. Yes. For me, you, you're a writer? Okay, just, you know what? All I can say is, out of the gate, when you say you're trying, just keep doing it and keep doing it. It's like anything else. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Yes. No. Okay. This is this is what I think. My personal opinion. If I read a lyric, and it, it's a great lyric, and it doesn't fit the melody that I intended for that lyric write another melody and then with that melody write a lyric that fits the melody and then you have two songs instead of one song because I, I draw you know when I write I can't sit down and say I'm gonna write a song and sit down and get the pen out and write say, I'm gonna no, that does not happen I get in the car and I drive and I'm sitting at a red light and something comes into my head and it's a lyric so I record it into my phone and then when I get home, I start finishing the song. It could be a riff too. It could be like, da -na -chika. okay, so this is the story of, there's a song called Sunny Days by The Drills. Yeah, I was sitting at, thanks man. I like this guy. And I was sitting, I was sitting at a, at a red light and, the, and the, you know, the, the signal was going And I started going like, fuck, I think that's a cool riff. So I recorded it in my phone, and then when I went home, I wrote Sunny Days. But then I needed a bridge. Oddly enough, another red light. And, to, 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 and I go, what can I do in the bridge? And I wanted it to be a cool, almost rappy, catchy lyric. And I was like, I like pound for pound. Pound for pound is good. Pound for pound. And okay, it's about a, and, you know, a, it's about a, a diva that it has been handed the, a silver platter, like, uh, and this was a friend of mine's girlfriend. She was a, born into a rich family, a famous family, and she was a diva, and she's handed the silver platter. But she's just a fucking bitch. <laughs> and she's crazy. So, I was like, pound for pound, oh wait. Crazy. <laughs> and then it went. So that's how, not even sitting at a desk, not even in a hotel room or anything like that, just sitting in a car and writing a fucking song at a red light. So it, it's, it's one of those things where inspiration can hit you anywhere and you go with it, you have to. Like sometimes when you don't feel like writing, you get an idea and then you have to write, right? 
You know, you should maybe learn how to play an instrument or find somebody who does play an instrument, like a, key, a guitar player or a piano player, and maybe get together. And uh, like I had a friend in, in, in the US that did that. They didn't play an instrument, but they went to a music teacher and they said, I have this melody in my head. What chords do you hear? And then they started playing chords and they had a song. But now they're co-writers. It's not just her song anymore, it's both. They're co writers so they're, it's both their songs. So it's really good to be able to play an instrument. Or even like these days, especially if you get like a recording pro, uh, format at home, like uh, a platform like Pro Tools or Logic or even GarageBand, where you can put like instruments down and then you can write a melody to that. That's, that works too. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, good luck. You know, just keep doing it. Wait, wait, I know, wait, yes, what, hold on. Man, this is a good crowd. Well, wait, I think I saw you first. Yes, yeah. Uh, I love all your riffs and that groovy, uh, swing quality. Uh, Thanks. What did you get? Did you listen to lots of soul? And I love funk music. I love funk music a lot. I like I love R&B. I love James Brown. I learned a lot of that stuff when I was playing in a cover band. I didn't want to play Zeppelin all night, so we were doing James Brown and Problem and Funkadelic and KC and the Sunshine Band. We would learn all this stuff. But the other thing is that even if you're a Zeppelin fan, I'm also a, a huge drum fan. So John Bonham, Bonham, he swung everything, and you could feel it in his playing. So now I. I I mean, it's, it's almost like I'm a dick when I play with a guy who wants to play a Zeppelin song on drums and he doesn't have that swing. I'm like, you're not swinging, man. And he's like, ah, what? I go, oh, you don't even know he's swinging. Yeah, I can be a dick. So um, I'm really tough on drummers in that respect. But I think a lot of it came from the funk and the R&B and, uh, and Bonham. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. Thank you very much. What's your name? Mauro. Mauro? Thank you. Hey man, pay me a compliment. I'll learn your name. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There's too many people in here. Yeah. Thanks man. I appreciate that. Thank you. Wait, I gotta go over here. Who's you?